The truth is, not everybody can immigrate, especially if you're 35 years and above. <laughs> Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the Canada Info channel. My name is Wolo. I am a regulated Canadian immigration consultant based in Manitoba, Canada. And I talk about everything immigrating to Canada and life in Canada. And if you're new to this channel, please do me a favor, subscribe and give me the like button or press the thought like button. If you are an old subscriber, I want to say a very big thank you for sticking with me and for watching this video. Please forgive the noise on the background. I had to do this video in a hurry because I promised myself I was going to be consistent and this week is already running. So please forgive the noise in the background. Okay, so today's video is more or less an advice. Um, it's an advice for people who are 35 years and above looking to immigrate to Canada and um, you're confused about how to start the process or you've already started the process, please, I just want you to take a step back, first of all. The reason why I'm giving this advice is because I've seen a lot of people who have spent so much money trying to immigrate to Canada without asking the right questions or doing the necessary things that are needed for them to know if they will be able to immigrate or not. The truth is not everybody can immigrate, especially if you're 35 years and above. If you're much, much ma matured, it is not everybody that will be able to immigrate, especially if your occupation is not in demand and if you do not have the funds to come to Canada to study. The reason why I said I would create this video is to benefit people who are struggling with writing the IELTS exam and people who have also indicated interest in learning the French language just to boost their points. Yes, in my last video I mentioned that French is actually the only thing that can break the barrier of immigration. But the truth is that there are some aspects of it that requires you needing English language to support you. Yes, French can help you, but if you don't have good scores in your English language test like IELTS or CELPIP, the chances of actually immigrating is very, very low. And I'm going to give you a story first of all, and then I'll explain why I feel it is important that you do the English language test first and see if you're able to create an express entry profile. The thing is, most people who are 35 years and above, not everybody is able to create an express entry profile because of age and because of qualification. So I don't want you to go spend your money trying to see how you could start learning French or spend your money to evaluate your credentials and at the end of the day, you're not able to create an express entry profile. If you talk about provincial nomination, it's only one or two provinces that you can actually indicate interest outside the express entry the other provinces you have to create an express entry profile and if you're not able to create an express entry profile with your english language course it means you have to write french language and for you to create an express entry profile you actually need very high scores remember i said it is for people who are 35 years and above if you fall into this category 35 years and above you do not have a master's degree and you want to immigrate to Canada, please take this advice from me. The first thing you should do to test if you will be able to immigrate is to write the IELTS exam. And let me mention this story here um, about a client who contacted me about two years ago in 2021 um, that she wanted, 2021 slash 2022, that they wanted to immigrate. And when I looked at the age, they were 40 and above. The client was 40 and above. And um, I knew that they had an in-demand occupation. That was the beauty of that particular case. They had, she, the client was um, a nurse. Yes, she was a nurse in one of the countries I won't mention where. And when they reached out to me, I said, okay, the first thing you should do is actually to write the IELTS exam and let's look at getting a job offer in any of the RNIP communities or the AIPP community because they were looking for people that could work, work as personal support workers. And we started the process. She wrote the first, first IELTS exam. The result was not good. And I told them that the result was not good because she had about 4.5 um, in reading or something. I don't know which one. But I you know, told her that the result was not good, that they should take the exams again. But they were not happy about me telling them that the result was not good for immigration. They said I should go ahead with trying to get them a job offer with that particular IELTS result. And one thing you should know is that if you apply for the RNIP pathway or the AIPP pathway and you're about to search for jobs, 
one thing most of the employers are looking for are people who are immigration ready. You cannot just start searching for jobs without, you know, including in your job search information that you have IELTS and you have evaluated your credentials. So we started searching for jobs with this particular low IELTS score. We do hope that, that the client will be able to write another IELTS exam that will be acceptable. Luckily, we got a job offer for this particular client and the job offer came under the RNIP pathway. And then when we submitted the application to the community for recommendation, I won't mention the name of the community, you go do your job search yourself. So when we submitted the application to the community for recommendation, the community rejected the application. And we went back to the employer to like tell the employer if they could switch the job offer from the RNIP route to um, the one that will come with LMIA. Now, I want you to know that with RNIP and AIPP, it is LMIA exempt, which means the employer can only pay $230 LMIA exemption fee. But if they have to switch to LMIA route, that means the employer will be paying $1,000 to get an LMIA to bring this particular person in. The employer was not willing to do that because of the expense of, you know, going for LMIA when they had an affordable option that was tied to a permanent residency pathway that would have been easier for the person to come in. So the next thing was for the client to retake the IELTS exam. The client retook the IELTS exam. They still did not meet the minimum threshold required for RNIP. Now the minimum requirement for RNIP is a band 5 which means you have to score a, a, a 5 in reading, 5 in speaking, 5 in listening, in writing and she was still not able to score a band five she was discouraged at the end of the day she felt that there was a way she could enter Canada without needing IELTS the which is actually true you could enter Canada without needing IELTS if you want to come through the study route but the truth is that by the time you want to still become a permanent resident you will still need to write IELTS even if you studied in Canada so there was a lot of back and forth between me and the client and at the end of the day um, the employer had to revoke the offer of employment because um, a long time had passed it was looking like the client was not willing to retake IELTS again and that was a discouragement and the employer revoked the offer of employment so the reason why I said I was creating this video to advise people who are 35 years and above is that I've seen a lot of people who are not able to pass the IELTS requirement especially if you're going through alternative routes so there is no point wasting your time evaluating your credentials and then trying to see how you can find a route to become a permanent resident of Canada without you know uh, passing the minimum requirements of IELTS. Uh, this advice is also for people who are interested in learning French. There is no way you can pass the French exam if you have not been able to pass the English language exam. You know, so there is no point wasting your time or wasting your financial resources if you are not able to get very good scores in IELTS. And remember, the older you get, the more difficult it is to even create an express entry profile. Except maybe you have a PhD, um, you have a very good IELTS score, you have a sibling in Canada, that way you can be able to create a profile even if you're 40 years. But if you don't have a master's degree, um, you don't have a very good IELTS score, let's say band 10, there is no way you can be able to create an express entry profile if you are 35 years and above. So, I am not discouraging anybody, but I just feel I should share this video and inform people so they don't waste their time and waste their resources. Especially if you don't have the money to pay for international tuition fees, you know. Some people want to say, okay, since I cannot come through other routes, through immigration routes, then let me come to Canada as a student. But like I said earlier, if you're not able to pass the IELTS exam even before you come in, what is, I mean, how do you know that after studies you'll be able to pass the IELTS exam? And most provincial nominations are also tied towards your draw score, towards scores, towards your points in the IELTS. So, this video is to advise you, please write the IELTS exam first before you start anything. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.